So this video focuses on marketing objectives. Um, this is really an introduction to the A2 marketing section before we actually start moving on to look at the actual uh, techniques involved in the marketing. We need to think about the marketing objectives and how they fit into the bigger picture. So uh, the kind of the key elements that we will be um, looking at in this little lesson are firstly, um, kind of considering what marketing objectives actually are. So what might be examples of marketing objectives? Um, and then we will be looking at the factors that influence the choice of these objectives. So what internal factors will affect them? By internal, I mean obviously within the business and what external factors. So what factors um, outside of the business will also have an effect on the objectives that a business sets for itself. Um, one business that's been in the news an awful lot recently is Tesco's. Um, so we're going to be looking at them as an example. Um, they've announced some uh, some some serious problems in the last 12 months or so. Um, so I think it's an interesting example for us to have a look at. So we're going to be taking a look at Tesco and thinking about the uh, the way that the ver these various things have influenced Tesco's itself. So when we think about the marketing objectives then, um, these, these are taken from uh, Tesco's website. Um, you might want to full screen this if you haven't already. Um, it's it's quite a lot of text so it's fairly small um, I just wanted to draw out really kind of a, key, a few key things okay um, first of all we've got our marketing objectives here now as exactly as we said before objectives to be effective need to meet the SMART criteria okay so specific measurable um, achievable realistic and time constrained so if an objective is going to be effective then um, then these are the characteristics that it needs to meet now Tesco's doesn't actually publish its specific SMART objectives, but it does publish, as you can see here, its strategic priorities. Um, it does so in two main ways, really. Firstly, on the UK business, and secondly, on international growth. The international growth one has been scaled right back um, recently, um, and, and we will have a little bit of a look at later on. Um, but if we just have a look at these um, UK ones down the left-hand side here, um, if you think about, obviously, marketing, okay, as being the uh, four P's of marketing, so product, price, placement, and promotion, okay, so those were from the um, AS course, those are the kind of key elements. Actually, they cover, as you can see here, an awful lot of um, Tesco's uh, Tesco's specific objectives. Okay, so um, if we kind of zoom this up a little bit like that, okay, just to cover the title a little bit, move this one out, out of the way for the time being, okay. So if we have a look at these ones here, okay, let's have a look. So, uh, so, so uh, the first one here is um, not specifically a marketing one, I suppose, although it does uh, kind of feed into the product if you consider the product to also include the service that people have. The second one, um, stores and formats, is um, obviously very much a placement uh, sort of idea. So uh, this element here is a marketing based objective. Range and quality obviously is product. So this is also marketing. Okay, price and value is obviously the price element, so also marketing. Brand is all part of promotion, so also marketing. Um, so all of these sorts of things are very strongly marketing based. So actually when we look at a company like Tesco, we can see that marketing plays a really, really important part of their business. OK, so um, it's just important to kind of to bear in mind that, um, that, that the marketing is a really important element of it. OK, so if we shrink that back away again. OK, um, so what um, we can think about as well, then, is if we come over this way, OK, we can have a look at the um, the international growth. OK, and obviously international growth is um, is also an example of a marketing objective. OK, so if we move this kind of way over here, OK, we can summarize um, marketing objectives. OK, and there are a number of common ones that um, that we would expect to see. So let's just jot those down. So we've got them recorded. So the first sort of marketing objective that uh, that we may well see is based on market share okay so that might mean either growth 
or in the case of Tesco at the moment, maintaining their market share. Okay, um, another one might be to target new markets. Okay, so that might be um, international. Okay, or it may be into kind of other things. So, for instance, thinking along the lines of kind of Tesco Bank, things like that. Okay, and entering another um, another market would uh, would be considered a marketing objective. Um, and also new product. Okay, so developing new product, new goods and services um, to replace those which um, have reached the, the decline phase of the product life cycle. So if we think about then kind of the internal operations of Tesco, okay, what actually is going to influence what Tesco chooses as its marketing objectives? Now, one of the really important things that we obviously need to consider, okay, is the corporate objectives, okay? So the corporate objectives, the objectives for the whole business, those should feed very much into the marketing objectives. So if a business is uh, using its objective structure effectively, then the corporate objectives should feed down into the marketing objectives. But in addition to that, we also need to think about other things. For instance, we need to think about financial constraints. Okay, um, Tesco's at the moment is, although it's still a very wealthy company, is in some financial difficulties. That's obviously going to influence the sorts of marketing objectives that it undertakes. So the constraint on finance, for instance, have meant that they have rolled back their international growth objectives because they uh, they, they they don't have the the finances available to um, to fund it. Um, so we need to think about finance and how that will affect the marketing efforts. HR, we also need to think about um, whether we have the right skills in the business. Uh, you know, when Tesco starts to think about new technology and how it's going to bring new technology into the store, does it have the people available to be able to do that? Um, if not, it, it obviously needs to get them. And, and until that point, it, it can't really pursue that marketing objective. So that also has an effect. And similarly, as you probably foresaw, um, it, we obviously need to think about operations as well and specifically things like capacity and um, production capabilities and so on, things like that. Um, you know, when Tesco's, for instance, went into its online businesses, that obviously required um, a whole extra level of distribution logistics, which would have been a massive operational issue for them to um, to try and organise. Having ordered from Tesco's a few times, they still haven't quite got it sorted. You know, you can book your hour slot and they tend not to arrive in it. So we need to think about, although marketing objectives obviously primarily have a marketing focus, as you would expect, they are affected by these other different functional areas of the business, the finance, the HR and the operations, but also crucially, and you must remember this when talking about it in, um, in examination answers, the marketing objective should be dictated to by the corporate objectives. So the previous slide, um, we looked at some of the corporate objectives of Tesco's and we saw that a number of them either were purely marketing or had marketing elements to them, those should feed into defining the marketing objectives for the business. So the other kind of main thing that we need to think about is what external factors will have influenced these objectives. Now, there are obviously kind of a number of different things here, but um, there are a few kind of in particular that, um, that, that, I, that I think we need to kind of be aware of. First of all, for Tesco's in particular, okay, one of the things that we obviously need to be very aware of is the impact that competition will have on their business, okay? So I've just taken a couple here, but the, these are two companies that are both eating into Tesco's market share at the moment. So um, obviously this is, ooh, let's get a pen, into our marketing objectives here. OK, um, Lidl, uh, obviously the kind of the discounting chain and Waitrose, the, the premium brand, both of those companies have seen their market shares grow recently. Now, Tesco still dominates the market. It still has more than 25 percent of the market. It's a legal monopoly. But um, but Lidl and Waitrose have both grown significantly in recent times. And obviously these and other uh, competitors. Oops. 
so competitors actions um, competitors actions are a really important factor which will influence marketing objectives so Tesco's has had to revamp its marketing objectives in the face of specifically Lidl and the other discounters you saw there it talked about it one of its objectives being specifically based around price and value um, in direct response I suppose to the the growth of the the discounting chains and obviously if it doesn't respond effectively to those if it doesn't set objectives to deal with those it's really going to struggle so the competitors actions is one of the key external influences um, another key external influence if we just get uh, get another picture up here so another key external influence Okay, and I've taken this as an example. Okay, is let's get a pen again. Technology. Okay, so um, the the van there represents the um the as you can kind of might be able to see, it's the kind of the internet shopping aspect of it. That's that's the example I've chosen here. A number of other ways that uh, that technology is obviously affecting um, Tesco's, for instance, in terms of their club card, the data that they can collect on that. Um, uh, you know, it's going to be influencing their their distribution chains and so on, things like that. Uh, there's the services that are available to people in the store. So uh, they now offer kind of like a, a Tesco Direct, almost like an Argos type of a thing. Um, in in the, the bigger stores, um, all, obviously the uh, kind of self scanning checkouts designed to speed up the service and so on. All of those are different aspects of technology, and uh, you know for for any company now, incorporating technology into their um, their marketing is very very important. Another really crucial aspect that has really grown in importance over the last few years is um, business use of social media. So um, when we think about technology here. OK, we also need to think about how the business goes about using social media. So, you know, does, how does the business use its Facebook uh, site? How does it use a, a Twitter feed? How does it encourage um, additional sales and so on through the use of, of social media? A lot of businesses do it very, very well. Um, I wouldn't necessarily count Tesco's amongst them. They, they don't have a very strong uh, social media presence, but it is something that um, that they obviously need to be very aware of. So competitors actions, technology. And the uh, the final kind of external influence okay and the final external influence then that uh, that they need to be aware of are I suppose what we could deem the market factors which might be things like the economy legislation and so on so the uh, the chart there shows um, what happened to real wages in the UK you can see the purple shaded areas uh, it's a little difficult to see the dates there but the purple shaded areas uh, the, the bigger one certainly corresponds to a period between 2010 oh thank you Sophie um, between 2010 and 2013 um, when oh Sophie's not happy at all with falling real incomes obviously um, so the purple areas, um, now that Sophie's quietened down a little bit, um, the purple areas indicate periods when uh, real wages were falling, which means obviously that wages uh, were falling um, in real terms, which means that inflation was rising faster than wages. Um, obviously, that gives people less money to spend in their, uh, you know, um, in terms of buying buying products and so on. So what um, that explained, you know, that explains to an extent the growth of Lidl and, and so on, things like that. But the, the prevailing market forces like that is something that um, that Tesco's needs to be very aware of. Another thing they need to be very aware of is is legislation. So we also need to think about um, laws which may affect uh, Tesco's business. So um, here you can see I've just a, a little picture of a sign that says 24 hours. So we obviously need to kind of think about, for instance, you know, were the government to allow longer Sunday opening hours, that would obviously, you know, that would have a big impact on uh, Tesco's marketing objectives. So I think um, important things from uh, this little presentation uh, to remember kind of the purpose of marketing objectives, to think about what sort of marketing objectives uh, a business may have, remembering the, the four P's uh, element of, of the marketing mix. Remember the fact that 
other internal uh, elements of the business will affect the marketing objectives. So it's important not just to think about them as isolated. You've got to think about them in terms of how they are affected by finance and the skills within the business and the uh, the capacity and the logistical situation that, that the business finds themselves in. Then also we've obviously got these external influences. Obviously, depending on the nature of the industry will depend on how significant these are at the moment. Competitors' actions are probably the most important for Tesco. But um, technology and market factors equally are things that a business will have to bear in mind. <laughs>